Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the definite integral from 0 to 3 of 64 over 64 minus x squared all raised to the 3 halves dx. Yesterday was the first day of the new semester, spring semester, where I work. And we actually spent a good part of the first class meeting in my differential equations class reviewing integration techniques. And this problem came up and it frightened a few of them. So I said, you know what, maybe I'll just record it tomorrow if you guys all wanna watch. So pause the video if you'd like to give it a shot on your own, you're gonna to need to use Trig Sub. And notice since we have this quantity here in the denominator, a constant minus variable quantity squared, then we're gonna go ahead and use the substitution that involves sine theta. So I'm gonna let x equal eight sine theta, and then dx would be eight, cosine theta d theta. Now we have to make sure we switch the limits of integration to also be in terms of theta immediately. As soon as the integrand is in terms of theta, the limits of integration need to match. So right now these limits belong to the variable of the integral that was given. These are limits in terms of x. So this is x equals 3, x equals 0. So I'm going to replace them where x is in this statement right here. So let's do the easier one first. If x is zero and that equals eight sine theta, then that's the same as saying sine theta is zero. And when is sine zero? When theta is zero. Now the upper limit might make you a little nervous, but it need not. So three is the value for x. That's gonna get substituted in right there. So three equals eight sine theta, which means three eighths is sine theta, and if you've put your unit circle to memory, you'll know there is no 3 eighths floating around out there, at least not for some nice uh, value. So all we do is we say, all right, theta is going to be sine inverse of 3 eighths, and we'll deal with it later. Okay, so now let's rewrite our integral all in terms of theta. The limits are 0 to sine inverse of 3 eighths. We have 64. And then dx is all of this, 8 cosine theta d theta. All right, over 64 minus, and then x squared is going to be 8 sine theta quantity squared. So it's going to become 64 sine squared theta, and then this is all raised to the 3 halves. Lovely. Now remember, the whole point of doing trig sub is so that we can clean up and use Pythagorean identities to simplify these quantities in here. So what I'm going to do is factor off the 64, and then I have 1 minus sine squared theta. So this is really 64 cosine squared theta, and that's all being raised to the 3 halves power in the denominator. So. After this, what you want to do is distribute that exponent, that 3 halves through. I'm not going to do anything with the numerator. The only thing I would do maybe, don't multiply it out. I don't even give my students a calculator. So 64 times 8, that's 8 to the third power. You'll see why I want to write it that way. And then we've got cosine theta, d theta up there. This 3 halves distributes. So 64 to the 3 halves means you take the square root of 64 and then you raise it to the third power. So this is going to become 8 to the third power. Oh, how lovely. And then cosine squared raised to the 3 halves, you multiply these exponents by each other. 2 times 3 halves, that just is going to give us 3. So we have cosine cubed theta down there. Perfect, perfect. So now we can have a little cancel party. 8 to the third cancels out. This cosine cancels out, and now I just have cosine squared in the denominator, which is perfect. So 0 sine inverse of 3 eighths. If I have cosine squared theta in the denominator, then that's the same as having secant squared theta in the numerator as my integrand. Do we know the antiderivative of secant squared theta? The answer ought to be yes. That should be one you put to memory. This is just tangent theta. And now we're going to evaluate it at our limits of integration, sine inverse of 3 eighths and 0. So you do upper limit minus lower limit. So we're going to have tangent of sine inverse of 3 eighths 
don't freak out. I'll help you evaluate that in just a second. Minus tangent of zero. Now, just keep in mind, anytime you see an inverse trig function, arc sine, sine inverse, arc cosine, cosine inverse, those all represent an angle. Remember we called it theta up here, right? Theta was sine inverse of three eighths. It's an angle. So I'm gonna draw a triangle where we have sine of that angle theta in my triangle equaling th uh, three eighths, yes. So if theta is sine inverse of three eighths, remember that's equivalent to saying sine of theta is three eighths. So sine theta is the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Then the missing side using the Pythagorean theorem is gonna be square root 64 minus nine. So square root 55. And what we're asked to do here is find tangent of that angle theta. This is all theta in my triangle. This is that theta right here. So using the triangle, then you're just gonna say, okay, what's the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side? It's three over the square root of 55 minus, and then tangent of zero, you should just know that's gonna be zero. So we're done. Final answer is three over square root 55. And I'm pretty sure the answer key that my class has um, rationalize the denominator. That's absolutely not necessary. In fact, I think it looks better if you don't. So I prefer if you didn't. Okay, that concludes your integral of the day. How was it? I There was one other semi-spicy one on their review worksheet, so I might do it for you guys later, maybe tomorrow morning. That, then my class would be happy because then I do the two hardest ones for them before they have to turn it in. But anyways, Thank you guys for all your support and for watching. I know I have such a nice little loyal crew out there doing these integral of the day videos and solving problems. And it's fun to see your comments with different techniques that you guys come up with, or also what tendencies, what techniques you prefer using, like what route your brain tends to go with compared to what I tend to go with. It's always fun. And if you have suggestions for integrals that you want me to solve, feel free to email me, mathwithprofessorv at gmail.com. I will be back sooner than later. I have more videos set to record. I just have to wait for the weekend usually to do it now. So anyways, thank you guys. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, TikTok until it's banned. I actually signed up for Red Note. Don't laugh. Everybody else was. And I said, well, I might as well start. I don't want to miss, miss my opportunity. So I'm there. I'm still figuring out how to use it. That confuses me. Math with Professor V everywhere. Okay, so you can find